Stanford University. I'm just going to give you a really brief um, summary of what, what we're up to in the Natural Capital Project. But um, I'd like to, first of all, thank everybody very much for coming and just say, kind of echoing comments made by others, how grateful um, I feel and the whole team on the Natural Capital Project feels for the incredible support we've had. I see so many people in the audience who have given really generously of their time at all hours and weekends and such. And um, we, we have support, you know, from, from every part of the university. And um, that just makes all the difference in the world. It also makes a huge difference having people like um, Buzz and Jeff specifically at the helm. It's, um, I don't know any pair that works harder. <laughs> and and um, they really deserve the credit for bringing together so much of what we're doing um, collectively. And then want to thank the broader community too. It's um, just without all this engagement, especially um, you know the challenge I'm going to pose at the end really is to the broader community, um, to real people, and figuring out how to move from sort of the knowledge that's generated in universities into the real world to have an impact, that, the impact that we're all seeking. That that sort of is the crux of the matter, and so we depend really heavily on getting the advice and rotting tomatoes and and chocolate kisses now and then that come, <laughs> comes in engaging over specific problems. So let me summarize quickly oops, um, for the Natural Capital Project. This is an effort that was started three years ago officially by three friends. Um, so Peter Kariva is head of science at the Nature Conservancy, Taylor Ricketts, head of science at World Wildlife Fund, and myself, uh, not head of science, but <laughs> one of many here at Stanford. And, um, we'd been working together for many years, um, trying to bridge the massive gap between what goes on in academia, the world of ideas and uh, new insights and energy and sort of new up-and-coming leaders and such, and the kinds of issues that confront people taking decisions out managing natural capital, lands and waters in the world today. There's, there's such a huge gulf there, and we decided after working together for a while informally to launch an effort that would um, help, we hope, in confronting those massive issues. And specifically, you know, our overarching goal is to, um, the vision is really to, for a future in which people recognize the many values that sustain and fulfill human life that come from natural capital, from our lands and waters, and that we, you know, integrate those values for real, in real resource decisions. So how do you... How do you launch something like that? What we've decided to do is focus on three areas, and it's with, I should say, these are the partner institutions, but there are many, many other uh, partners involved who are doing most of the real work, work in the ground. And the idea is to, again, bring together um, the creativity and innovation in universities with all that goes on, the relationships and much of the creativity and innovation on the ground in, in changing policies and changing practices in changing the way people feel and think about the environment. So um, with the many partners, we've, we've got three main thrusts. The first is to capture the new knowledge to inspire you know, more generation of it, but then capture that in very useful, practical tools. And I'll show you our, our first main tool here called INVEST. The second is to demonstrate how these tools and new approaches can be implemented in policies and real resource decisions, whether of governments worldwide or corporations or communities, individuals at many different levels, and to develop inspiring models of success. So in choosing places to engage, we're always looking for the potential to replicate and scale whatever approaches are um, tailored specifically to, to issues at, at a given place or sector. And then finally, um, our, our big thrust that we're just sort of embarking on now is to use the convening power of Stanford and the other partners to engage leaders and, and help further this, this massive transformation that's underway, thanks in part to this effort, but mostly thanks to many um, people working to bring about this change worldwide. So the first tool I mentioned is Invest, and it's basically a software system which fits the Bay Area, um, Silicon Valley, and the idea is to illuminate the values of from landscapes and seascapes. So I'll show you an example here. You know, this, this software tool, it stands for Integrated Valuation of Ecosystem Services and Trade-Offs. 
the idea is to figure out, well, what, first of all, um, are the values that are at stake with climate change, change in population, um, change in policies and programs? What values are at stake? What uh, will result from, from these many changes that are underway in the world today? And then secondly, to ask specifically, well, what would the return on investment be? Can we quantify that in terms of the suite of values that we get from, from nature and natural systems of you know, changing policies and such? So here, just in a little example, to look specifically at landscapes and ask, well, how would restoring a river system influence the agricultural revenues to farmers, flood risk, drinking water quality, um, carbon sequestration or climate stability? And, and biodiversity and wildlife. So I'm going to show you that we're working in a lot of places around the world. They're basically all experiments at this stage. There's um, a lot more going on in many other countries, but these are places where we have capacity. We've got real engagement on the ground through the many partners and where some of the most transformational change is happening today um, and change that we can see has the potential to be replicated and scaled. So I had a lot of trouble figuring out which story to tell. They're all different. They're really interesting and inspiring. And um, I decided in the end to focus on China because of the incredible role China plays in the world today and is likely to um, play in the future. Um, so while China might not be the most replicable sort of place and, and set of governance, system of governance, there's certainly um, capacity to scale any successes there. So. Going to China, the experiment they have underway was um, precipitated by the flooding that occurred in 1998. Probably most people remember that. Um, huge numbers of lives lost and billions of dollars of damage. And um, it led overnight to the Chinese Academy of Sciences saying, well, a lot of the flooding, the damage resulted from the heavy deforestation in the upper reaches of some of the river basins, especially the Yangtze River Basin. And overnight, they, um, the government banned logging in Yunnan province, Yunnan wide. Like 100 million people live in the upper reaches of the Yangtze River alone. Um, that's where a third of China's agricultural output comes from. So how do you sort of impose such a huge change in the way people can get their livelihoods from the land without massive other consequences? So what they're trying to do is um, implement their policy a little less, a little in a more nuanced way through basically um, three major efforts in which we're, we're heavily involved. So at the, and they're, they're at different scales, at the national scale, at sort of the county scale, and then at, at the household scale. At the national scale, the government has, oh wow, I'm already, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> the government <laughs> is um, implementing a new system of reserves specifically for ecosystem functions or benefits from natural capital. I hadn't seen you there. And, okay, and then second, um, at the county scale, integrating well with that national policy and also using INVEST. The INVEST is being used in, in both of these to map out where the values of natural capital are and how to um, restrict and permit development of all sorts, agricultural, energy, infrastructure, and so on. Um, at the federal and then the, the county scale. And um, finally, in terms of the household level impacts, we're um, working with Xi'an University to assess social health and other um, impacts of these payments that are being made, the $100 billion investment in achieving this massive change in the way the whole system is managed, the whole upper Yangtze River Basin. Um, Finally, I better get out of here. Um, I just want to invite people to help further if you're interested in um, working through the business planning and sort of a market analysis that we're conducting now for achieving widespread adoption of these approaches. So huge apologies and thank you and glad I escaped the little <laughs> For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.